Oh, hello, hedgehogs. This is <laughs> this is Sammy, the classic Sonic fan. So before we get to the topic of this episode, I'd like to thank my friend McNibbler for producing that new intro. He did a terrific job, um, and he's an overall talented guy. He actually has his own YouTube channel, which is linked in this video and in the description. So be sure to subscribe to him because he deserves it. He essentially does reviews of 3D geometric puzzles, and that's a pretty cool hobby in my book, but um, he also makes other mm, kinds of videos too, which is cool also. Anyways, um, let us shift to the topic of this video. Today's episode is about Dragon Ball Super. 2015 has been a huge year for Dragon Ball. We got to see the sequel to 2014's Battle of Gods movie, Revival F. A Dragon Ball Xenoverse was released on Sony and Microsoft platforms, and Dragon Ball Z Extreme Buden is set for an October 29th release. But of course, almost out of the blue in eight, late April, Dragon Ball Super was announced as a new anime and an official continuation of the Dragon Ball manga, while Dragon Ball GT was just a continuation of the Dragon Ball Z anime canon, if that makes sense. Now, Dragon Ball Super has already premiered six episodes in Japan, and subbed versions of these episodes are actually mm, available online for our discretion, if you have not seen them yet. And naturally, fan feedback followed. The feedback was mainly positive and even somewhat quiet at first. But when episode 5 premiered, a thick shell of a criticism imploded. Essentially, the criticism derived from the poor quality of the animation of this episode and I'd like to share why it's unfair to judge the entire series based off that one episode. So basically, because of this one episode, the entire series is bad and now it's a GT. All of it. I do admit Toei could have worked on this episode a bit longer, and I don't know what the animators had to endure during the production of this episode, specifically the insertion of the directors, and the stress of the time restraint. However, I think outside of that one fight, the animation has been solid, and even comparable to the recent movie's animation. And in motion, the poor animation was actually barely noticeable, just to me anyhow. Everything else about the episode was fine too. The scripting was good as ever. Mm, and the, the fight wasn't as anticlimactic as in Battle of the Gods either. I mean, Goku was still absolutely no match for Beerus, but the fight didn't just last a few seconds. Plus, I'm sure Toei received mm, the feedback and will try to focus on quality over quantity. Hopefully. Honestly, I've been quite enjoying the show. There's a lot more to favor than there is to score. I'm not implying that the show is or ever will be superior to its predecessors, but I think it's fair to officially recognize it as the official continuation of a Dragon Ball manga. It's at least on par with the Boo saga of Dragon Ball Z. Fans don't only complain about the animation, but also the lack of conflict. It's too slow, they say. Is it really, though? Bear in mind, this is a new series. Dragon Ball is in need of in reintroduction to this generation. It can't just continue to appeal to its older fans. Those fans were once young too, and were introduced to the cast. I think this generation of children deserves an opportunity to be introduced to the Dragon Ball cast as well. The first three episodes took time to introduce the main characters, Goku, Vegeta, and Beerus. And of course, the supporting cast, such as Gohan, Goten, Chi-Chi, Bulma, Trunks, Roshi, Krillin, Tien, and so on. Plus, Dragon Ball was never driven by conflict all the time in the past. The original Dragon Ball was definitely more about adventure and comedy than combat. Even Dragon Ball Z had to take breaks from this every once in a while with filler. And even Dragon Ball Z's filler couldn't emulate Dragon Ball. Even Dragon Ball Z's conflicts didn't commence immediately. Especially in the Boo arc, in which it was almost 20 episodes before the villains of the arc revealed themselves. Even before that, the show was in no rush to, receive, to reach the climax. 
And we've already met Beerus in Dragon Ball Super, and he's already defeated Goku and crashed Go in Bulma's party. So I think it's being paced just fine. Dragon Ball Super is almost like what Dragon Ball Z tried to be. It, it's more easygoing like Dragon Ball, but doesn't throw any away everything Dragon Ball Z established. Finally, some are concerned about Dragon Ball Super's overlapping of the two recent movies. I think it's for the best, because continuing from where those movies left off would be confusing for the people who didn't watch them. Also, they're too conducive of plots just to be compressed into movies. Uh, by that, I mean the plots have so much potential, and expanding them with an anime that allows longer stories is a great opportunity. Again, I'm not saying it's better than its predecessors, because it's too early to evaluate that, and I doubt it'll be better anyways. Now then, this episode has mainly been me disagreeing with other people's criticisms, but believe it or not, I actually have some criticisms of my own. I mean, one thing I fear is, are they just going to stick to the script of the movies? Or uh, are there going to be no surprises? So far, it's just been the same story we told in a different, more expansive way. I want the series to fix some of the mistakes the movie made. Above all, that's giving other characters chances to shine. Quit making any other character that's not a Saiyan, or should I say not Goku and Vegeta, futile in strength. It's almost, it, it, it almost makes it seem like they're just there for the sake of it. The supporting cast anyways. I mean, they keep the cast myriad, but they, they, each, they each had a purpose at one point that was other than just being good friends. I think um, empowering these characters could help um, the show to be less formulaic. As in, the characters struggle to hold their ground until Goku shows up to save the day. We need variation. It's probably too late to dramatically empower characters like Krillin, Yamcha, Tien, and Chiatsu. Uh, by this, I mean getting them mm, close mm, to Goku's power, like the old days. But at least mm, do this for Gohan, Goten, and Trunks, the sons of Goku and Vegeta. They, or Gohan, or at least, should be on par with Goku and Vegeta right now. And, and should I even be including Vegeta's name? Goku gets all the spotlight. I have nothing against the Goku character, I just hate how the producers don't take any risks, but just mm, mm, insist on keeping everything the same, like Goku being the star. Did I mention that I think Goku should have stayed dead after the Cell slash Android arc, and Goten should have assumed the role of Goku's mm, mm, replacement as intended? I just hope the show's first two arcs deviate from the foundation, set by the movies they're based upon. So with that, I doubt this show will rival the impact that Dragon Ball Z had, but I believe it'll still be an entertaining and satisfying show. I've enjoyed Dragon Ball Super so far, and I know it'll only get more interesting as it progresses, especially from the Universe 6 arc onward. Anyways, thanks all for watching, and keep on the lookout for more content. This is Sane Aquatic Sonic Fan, signing out.